in the last video I did, I think it was the last one, one of the last ones, I showed you some pages that I had prepped that came out of a phone book this size. So we got this new one, so I was going to repurpose the old one, and my plan didn't quite work out. You know, I was going to try to keep it intact, but due to some um, unforeseen errors, I ended up having to take the pages out. And what I had done was just gone through and, you know, glued a few together. Um, didn't count them. They're, they're random. Removed some pages, glued some together, gessoed them, and then ended up having to rip them out of the phone book. So I had these great gessoed uh, phone book pages with these rough edges that I really liked. And I'll show those to you in a minute. I just put another coat of gesso on them and they're drying so I can't mess with them just yet. But I didn't really have a plan any further than that for those pages and I finally came up with one. I ended up having to cut them down more than I intended to, but I think I'm liking where it's going so far. I may totally change my mind, but, um, you know, for now I'm going with it. What I decided to do was bind them in a hardcover book, and I had this one. And I looked at several different binding options, you know, stitched bindings and some other different things. And because of the size of the pages and because of, you know, their stacks of thin paper glued together and gessoed, they're kind of brittle. You know, they don't fold well, so they needed to have a loose leaf binding. So, you know, that either means a stitched binding, you know, like a Japanese stab bound thing, or binder rings, really. You don't have a lot of choices there. I don't care for binder rings. I think I've mentioned that before. Um, they're okay. They're just not my favorite. But at some point along the way, I have picked up a package of these. And I don't know what I did with the package. But um, I think they were Tim Holtz. There were two in a package. And I think this is the large size binder ring. And I don't remember how much they were. Five, six dollars, something like that, for the pack of two. I hadn't done anything with them, and I thought this might be a good time to do something with them. So, um, I actually thought of this binding first, and then I went looking for a book that would fit these rings, because, you know, it has to be wide enough across here that the book will still close and not get um, hung up on the rings if they're too big. So, decided on the rings, found me a book, cut the book block out, you know, just along there. It was an old book. Pages are kind of narfed up and brittle, so it came out pretty easy. And then I'll do something with this at some point. I don't know what, but I've got a whole bunch of those laying around. So, I've got my covers. Um, the spine was really flimsy and just about to tear away from the covers, so I just put some duct tape in there just to kind of strengthen it, and it's all going to get covered up, so it doesn't matter what you use. Then I put my little binder thing in, and it's just, it's held together with these two really stupid brads, which, you know, I don't know, they're, they really don't work, but by the time I get through with the gluing and the fabric and all that, they'll be in there sturdy. So, that's how they go in there, just like that. I use my little crocodile thing to poke the holes. And see, the book does close all the way so the rings are not too big. And then you have this on the outside, which is fine because I'm, this is going to be covered. I'm going to put some kind of reinforcing something over it first, um, just to make it even sturdier, and then I'll have a fabric over it. And then the pages will just have two holes punched, and they'll go in there. So that is my plan. Um, here's what I'm thinking about for the cover. I'm thinking, okay, this book's kind of icky. It's not, um, you know, sometimes 
if the hardback cover is, is still in good shape or, it, or it's interesting or cool looking, then I, I'm usually kind of inclined to leave it like it is. You know, you can still embellish it and all, but I wouldn't totally cover it if it was worth looking at. This is not really worth looking at. This, you know, the spine's all faded and gross. So I think um, what I'm going to do is just completely cover it with fabric. In fact, I'll probably gesso it first so that none of the ickiness ends up showing through. But um, I decided I wanted to cover it with fabric and I'm probably going to end up using wet media on the pages because they are nice and heavy and gessoed so they would be really good for painting on. So for my cover I wanted something bright, um, you know, something that I could get paint on and it wouldn't make that big of a difference. So I remembered all of these batik fabric pieces that I had when I bought years ago for something. I don't even know what. And yeah, this is how I store them. I roll them up like that, measure them, write it on the thing. And it just makes it so much easier if I'm, you know, I know I need a piece a certain size, then I can see how big it is instead of having to pull it out and open it up and oh it's not the right size and then fold it back up you know that irritates me so this makes it worth it to go through the, the trouble of measuring them and then rolling them up like that to me it does so I decided I wanted a dark color which is not these yellows I might use them for the inside but not for the outside the two that caught my eye are these two. I like this dark blue, I like this red one. Um, and these are both, you know, size is just fine on these. I won't really need that much. And then I might do the yellow on the inside of the book. That might look good. Really for either one. Okay, I may do that. Um, I think I like the blue. I'm going to do the blue. So, blue on the outside and this yellow on the inside, or should I do a different pattern? Because these have different, like that, yeah, let's do that, that's better. Yellow on the inside, and I've got this weird piece of heavy canvas something, let me grab it, that I've used before. Okay, it's all wrinkled up because I was trying to soften it up. It's really stiff, and I think I've tried to soften it up before because I've used it for this before, and it won't soften up. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I thought it was just, you know, starched really heavy, but it's not. It's, and it doesn't, I thought maybe it has a paper content, like it's got a cardboard content or something, but it didn't start disintegrating when I soaked it in hot water. So I don't know what is up with this, but it is really stiff. Um, anyway, it's a little bit better now that I've soaked it. It's not as pliable as I would like for it to be, but it'll work. And that's what I'm going to use to wrap around the spine part, and it'll go underneath the cover, and that will just give it strength under there. So that's the plan for that. And for the closure, my plan is just to use a button and a rubber band. And I'm out of grommets. I have little bitty eyelets and I'm out of big grommets and I can't believe I let myself run out of grommets. Who does that? So I have no grommet to put on the back, but I've got washers. I got washers out the wazoo, so that'll work. And a hair rubber band. I think we've all seen this one before, yeah. Where, you know, it goes, it actually goes like that. And then it will come up here and then it will wrap around whatever little button I pick. And I look through my button jars and I didn't really find anything spectacular. I found these, which I'm not real crazy about, especially on this dark. So I don't know. But I have this thing of some old buttons. I can't even remember where I got this. Maybe on eBay. I don't know. It had tons of buttons. And most of them I took off of the cards, but I saved the cards because, you know, those are awesome. Those old button cards. 
but I did leave some of them on the cards, some of the cooler ones. And unfortunately, they're all not really big enough for what I want, and the ones that are big enough are not shank buttons, and I wanted shank buttons. These, I actually kind of like these. I don't know if you can tell. They're a, a blue, a dark blue. So, you know, they don't stand out off of the blue fabric, but they go really well. So these, and they're shank buttons. And look, they've got the little um, doodah already, which I can use to attach them. So these, actually, I might use those. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'm going to go get my papers together, and I'll kind of put it together a little bit to give you an idea of what I'm thinking it's going to look like. And then we'll go from there. So, be back in a sec. Okay, so my pages are all dry, and I put them in the book like I want them. And as you can see, I did have to cut them down quite a bit, but that's okay because I really think this is going to look good. Um, I went ahead and just sewed the cover right quick, just a thin coat of just, you know, my homemade gesso that I use. So, I think I'm ready to get started on it, really. Um, tonight, I will probably press the pages. Um, I like the texture, you know, they're kind of bumpy, and um, I really like that. But I think I am going to go ahead and put them under some weight so that they're even and um, I think that would probably just be a good idea. And I have some cement, you know, uh, pavers out in the backyard, some extra ones that I sometimes use. You can use, you know, a cinder block out in your garage or whatever, because I don't have a book press. And making one would actually be really quite simple, but it's just never been real high on my priority list, so I've not made one. And occasionally, I have a little makeshift press that I use. I'll show you that. It's this one, which is actually a flower press, not a book press. Um, I don't use it very often because it's small. So whatever I put in it has to be small. But these pages, you know what, they're going to be just about right. I think I can get away with it. So I'll probably use this press tonight. Um, but anyway, there's a little tip for you. If you run across a flower press, you know, really cheap somewhere, you can grab it and use it as a book press. You're uh, more likely to find a cheap flower press than you are a cheap book press. Mainly, probably because of the size. Book presses are usually quite a bit larger than flower presses, but you know, they'd be easy to make. I just really need to do that one of these days. So, tonight I'm gonna press my pages, and um, I think right now. I'm going to go ahead and put the, oh yeah, yeah, put the reinforcement thing on the spine of the book and then get it ready to cover. So um, I'll do that and then check back in and we'll see how it's going. Okay, I got my um, spine reinforcement fabric glued on and discovered the hard way that uh, Yes Paste was the wrong glue for the job. This fabric stuff is just so thick, it... Yeah, I'm filming. It, uh, it just laughed at the Yes glue. So, I ended up using this, Fabri-Tac. Um, super sticky, dries really, really fast. Um, it, it worked perfectly. And I didn't worry about, you know, trying to get it really neat. There's some glue blobs, glue blobs around here, and that's okay because this is going to be on the inside. If this was an outside reinforcement, it would be different, but the fabric's going over it, so I'm not worried about all that. 
but the point was to get it stuck down and to reinforce the spine and mission accomplished. So there we are. Um, next, okay, I have already measured for my holes for my closure and I just found the halfway point and came in hopefully far enough so that nothing hangs over the edge. I'm going to poke a hole right there for my button and then I'm going to poke a hole right here for the the washer. It'll be on the other side but that'll have the um, rubber band coming out of it. And I think I'll go ahead and do that. And I just had to um, give my hole poker here. I never can remember what this is called. Uh, does it say on here? We are memory keeper. Oh, here we go. Crocodile. Crocodile too. Um, I had just had to give it a little treatment because it was getting sticky. It, you know, I would push down and it wouldn't come back up all the way. I had to pull it up. So it, I don't know if it was something sticky got in there or what, but I just took it out in the garage and sprayed it with liquid wrench. And man, it's <laughs> it's moving good now. But if you see something greasy come flying out of it, that's why. <laughs> but it, it solved the problem. Okay, I'm just going to use the uh, bigger one of the two and poke the hole in the back. And I'm going to go ahead and poke before I cover with fabric. I'll have to re-poke after, but I like to poke before. And then after, I usually just stick a little pokey tool down in the hole or something. It's just what I do. So there's the back cover hole. And the front cover hole, I think I'm going to use the small one. See if I can get away with that. I don't know. Uh, let's see. No, I think I'm going to have to use the big one to get that um, shank through there. Okay, never mind. Switch back to the big one. All right. Yeah, line it up. And that looks about right. Poke it. Okay, holes are poked. Now, to cover. And you want to cover the outside first. I um, decided I'm going to use this. And I decided what I'm going to do, and I don't know, I've got my yes paste out here, and I don't know if that's the right glue for the job. I may have to go upstairs and get some matte medium. Because I want to... Um, I don't want it to be smooth. I, I want it to be kind of wrinkly and textury. So, uh, yeah, I may have to get some uh, matte medium to put over the top of it in addition to the glue on the bottom. Let's just start going and see what happens. Let's, I'm going to put on the um, rest of the yes paste that I already pulled out of the thing. I'm going to use a damp brush to smooth that out a little bit. Because even though I do want it bumpy and textured, I also want to make sure that I have an even coverage of glue. Alright, now let's see how this goes. I'm just going to use the whole dang thing. And we'll see if it lets me make it all wrinkly like I want. Well, so far so good. This is letting me kind of kind of get to where I want to go. But I am going to have to put something on top. And I'm debating if I should use a fabric medium or matte medium. I think I'm going to go with matte medium. We'll see what happens. Um, let me run upstairs and get that. Okay, I got this um, 
matte medium. We'll use on the top here. And let's just see how that does. I just kept adding more uh, matte medium and squinching up the fabric. You know, squinch, that's a combination of squish and scrunch. That's squinch. Past tense would be squanch. You better write that down. You know, somebody's going to need to know that at some point. I'm sure of it. So it's looking good and squanched. Okay, now I'm just going to let that dry. Now that my cover's dry, um, we can go ahead and put the closure on and then the inside papers. And I've already stuck the button on, and let me tell you what, I had to fight with it because the shank is really not long enough for this. It needed to have a longer shank. Um, but it was the perfect button. I really wanted to use it, so I kind of made it work. I had a really hard time getting the jump ring through the shank, but I got it. Um, and that's all you do is just stick the stick the shank part through the hole that you poked, and then secure it with. You can use a jump ring. You can use a paper clip. You can use the little um, cooter not cooter pins. I always call them cooter pins, and I know that's not right cotter pins that come with them. Um, on these old buttons you can find them and they're just fabulous. I think I'm going to pull this one off and use it. I tried to use it um, on the this one. I tried to use the little pin and look how gnarled up it got because it was so tight. It was such a tight fit in there. So much for that one, but I can use it over here for the hairband part. And all you need for this is, normally I wouldn't even have a washer if you have like a grommet or a big eyelet to stick in that hole, that's ideal. But I'm out, so I'm just going to use this um, washer to help it to keep from pulling through. And I'm going to use the cooter pin, the cotter pin, to keep it in place. So that's all I do there. Do that like that. And then thread this through the hole. Just kind of a tight fit. There we go. So there you have it. That is not going anywhere. And now, and like I said, this is a tight fit. I normally like to have a little more room underneath the button for the elastic to go around, but it will go around with a little help. There we go. It will work. Um, and I just like that button. That button's too perfect not to use. So I think it's going to be just fine. Now it's time to put the inside fabric on. And you know, when you do this, um, you can use liquid starch. You can use um, fabric stiffener. You know, there's there's a variety of different things that you can use to make your fabric all squinchy like this, but I don't have any of those on hand, so I'm just kind of using what I got, and what I got is uh, matte medium and some Yes Paste, and it's working, so we're good. What I am going to do before I start anything else is I'm just going to take a little piece of duct tape and just put tape over these lumpy areas just to kind of smooth them down so when I put the fabric over it there won't be too obvious of a lump there. This one will be because of the washer but that's okay. Not that big of a deal.
There we go. Now, I've got my fabric for the inside. That's not right. Right here. And I've cut it into two pieces because my little thing here is already attached. And I had to do that because, you know, I wanted it underneath the um, piece that I put over the outside. I wanted the little brads underneath that. So I had to go ahead and attach it so that I could put that, this piece over that. Which means I just need to have two pieces of inside fabric instead of one. And it'll work just fine. I'm just going to do it just like that. Just kind of slip that underneath as much as it'll go. And this, you know, by the time I get through squinching everything up, you're not even going to be able to tell anyway. So, that'll be the thing, right? Right. So, first thing I'm going to do is put some yes paste down. And I did find that it does work better if I put this down first. I started thinking. You know, because I did it on the front cover, and I thought, well, maybe the matte medium would have been enough. No, it wasn't, because when I flipped it over and did this edge part here, I didn't use the Yes Paste first. I just used the matte medium, and it, it was a little more tedious because it took it um, longer to dry. For the inside, I just pretty much did the same thing that... I did on the outside um, a coat of yes paste, lay down the fabric, squinch it up, add some uh, matte medium, and that was about it. Um, it was a little bit tedious, but you know, not excruciatingly so. I would do it this way again if I had to. You know, I'd prefer to have some liquid starch or something on hand, but. Um, you know, if you don't have it, this makes a pretty good substitute. You know, it'll work. Okay. Now that I've got my inside cover pretty much the way I want it, I'm going to let that dry and then we'll stick some pages in there. My cover is dry inside and outside but before I put the papers in I'm going to do just a little painting on here because it's just a little boring to me I did a little bit on the inside just added some pink and some blue here and there I know you probably can't tell because it was so busy to begin with but that's kind of what I want to do on the outside too and I'm just going to use some of these fabric paints that I've got. They're kind of thick and should brush on nicely. So let me grab a paper towel and I'll do that. These paints ended up working really well because they're so opaque. So um, they showed up really well on the dark fabric and you know I just loaded the brush and kind of brushed and blobbed it on. Um, I didn't paint any designs or anything, just I put the pink in the low areas and then just hit the high spots with the yellow. And I think it turned out great. I'm calling it done. Uh, I think it's finished and I like it and I'm really, actually I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I've got, uh, put my little pages in. Oh, and I already did a page last night. You know, I had to test it out, so I just doodled the little flower page. But took the rest of my pages out of the squisher, you know, the press, flower press that I was using as a book press. So they're a little more compact and neater. And... You know, they, um, I think they're going to work great. And I like, I like the ring thing so that I can pull them out and work on them if I'm doing something really messy. So I am calling it a success. And I think I'll definitely make, um, 
more like this. I like the matte medium. Worked really well as a like a fabric stiffener. Um, both my husband and my daughter had no idea it was fabric. They couldn't really tell what it was. So it, it turned out really well. And uh, I like the pages. I like the closure. I like everything. So, yay, calling it a success. Uh, when I was painting, and last night I used the same paints that I used on here, you know, those little fabric paints. I used those to paint these flowers, and then I went over them with just some uh, markers, India ink markers, just for, you know, kind of a doodle page. But when I was painting, I had the paint out. I just squeezed it out on some of the waxed paper that I had used when I was uh, gessoing all those pages. You know, I just had this big stack of wax paper that's got gesso all over it because, yeah, there you can see. So I had a piece of that and that's what I put the paint on to use kind of as my palette because, you know, it was there, it was handy. And then when I got done, I just wiped all the paint all over the wax paper, thinking I would use it as some kind of background thing or something. But it, it turned really muddy because I wasn't really paying attention to what I was doing. I just mushed them all together. So I just doodled a little design using a, um, <clears throat> this is an alcohol marker and doodled on it and then I've been taking my um, markers you know these India ink markers pit, pit pens and I've been coloring in which you know covers I've done this side right here so you can see it kind of covers up some of the muddiness but that muddiness makes a good base for the markers to hold on to because, you know, plain wax paper, there's nothing for them to hold on to. They don't really work. So it kind of makes its own little primer there. And so I'm going to finish coloring in and then doodle in some black, more black lines for details. And then, I don't know, I'll probably stick this in one of my big art journals and um, make a journal page out of it or something. So, I got a bonus project out of my project. Um, that's it for now. I don't even have anything new started, which is unusual. So, why don't I go do that? I'll go start something new, and we'll see what happens.